And on a deeper level, you need to identify the patterns in your thought process and your behavior. So say we use my example of meeting the same type of people. Where am I meeting these people? Um, probably the club. <laughs> probably the club. <laughs> Hey guys, it's L2 Water Dukes in the back with another video, and today's another segment of Spilling the Tea for the Girlies. So right now, it is a new year, and I'm so excited for 2024 because why? Because I become 25 years old. Scary. <laughs> Honestly guys, I keep seeing this video on TikTok where people are talking about how at 25 years old, your frontal lobe as a woman becomes fully developed. And I'm so excited for this because apparently your decision making is supposed to become clearer. A lot of it's supposed to be better for yourself. Which is why this video is all about destroying your victim mentality. I know that this year I wanna hold myself accountable and the first thing you need to do to do that is to be honest with yourself. I know that previously I've had a victim mentality because I used to complain so much. Like everything is, why is this happening to me? Why is my life like this? Whereas this year, I'm putting my foot on the gas and I'm going to try to change my own narrative and destroy my victim mentality. If I want something to change, I'm just going to go ahead, put the motions in place and see if it happens. The least you could do is try and show up for yourself and all 2024, that's exactly what us girlies need to be doing. So I have a key for you guys. Breaking free from a victim mentality is a process that takes time and effort. So you need to be patient with yourself. That is exactly why I'm giving myself the year to figure it all out. And when I say figure it all out, I mean certain aspects. Like it should not take you a year to start putting your plans in place, but you should be thinking of your plan and writing it down and trying to put it in motion. Which is why I'm giving myself this year to really relearn myself. And the first step in doing this is to acknowledge and recognize. The first thing you need to do is, as I said, acknowledge that you have a victim mentality. Previously, I had a video about changing your perspective on your situations, and that's exactly what we need to do here. The common denominator in all the sequences that happen in our life is us. So if we are a victim to certain things, that is perfectly fine, but you need to assess why you are a victim to that situation or that person and figure a way out to change that narrative. And this is all because we are owning the fact that we have the power to change our perspective and in return, change our narrative. I was literally just having a life talk with my cousin about this, but I was telling her how I had to acknowledge the fact that I deal with the same type of people and expect a different outcome. And not even to say that these people are always toxic. It's just that these people are always probably doing the same job that occupies their time or doing things in their life that just make them very unserious. And I really feel like that is a common theme of my age group is that people are still trying to figure it out. And we're 25 years old. Like you don't have that much time anymore. Things need to be in motion. <laughs> which brings us to our second step, which is take responsibility. Some people don't change because they don't accept responsibility for their actions. If you've ever fallen out with somebody, think about the fact that did they apologize for what they did? And if so, did things really even change? Sometimes they don't because people just apologize to apologize, but they don't actually look within and think, why did I do that? What made me do that? And fix their actions on a deeper level and from a deeper understanding. And this also comes into play with your own actions because you have the power to respond positively in negative situations. I think 2023, I went through my villain era and I was all about people taking responsibility for their actions and me telling them about themselves and making them learn from what they've done. And now I realize that I need to decide when it's really worth my time and effort to tell people about themselves. But I've learned how to tell people about themselves without me getting negative and stooping down to their level. Some people are there for a reason or a season and we need to recognize that. So moving on to step number three, we need to recognize patterns. As I said before, I recognize that I deal with the same type of people and this brings the same outcome. And that's the first thing you need to do when you think that you've been stagnant. And on a deeper level, you need to identify the patterns in your thought process and your behavior. So say we use my example of meeting the same type of people. Where am I meeting these people? Um, probably the club. <laughs> probably the club. <laughs> And I know that I'm not going to find 
my soulmate in the club. It's very rare that you guys find your soulmates in the club, and if you have, congratulations. It's probably the easiest place to find somebody. <laughs> but now I know that the club just is not for me. Like I literally wanted to be in the club so bad for New Year's, and when I got there, I was like, nobody's in the club anymore. Like literally nobody is in the club anymore. You know where people were on New Year's? At church which is where I should have been. But we live and learn. I feel like that literally identified my patterns in life and literally told me to wake up and change. And then aside from that, you need to identify if there are situations where you constantly find yourself as the victim. Personally, I haven't had situations where I've constantly been a victim at the hand of somebody else. But if you have people that are toxic in your life, like I know people go through a lot of family situations and sometimes that results in you deciding whether or not your family members need that much access to you. I think one of the common themes that I've also been seeing on TikTok is that because of the economic situations, a lot of people my age are moving back home and they're realizing that for their own mental health, they need to leave home. And I actually had a friend that did a similar thing and I was talking to her about the fact that doesn't she just like being home and not having to pay bills? And she was like, I literally fight with my mom all the time, which is why I cannot live home. Like she did that she loved her parents. She loved being at home with them, but her spending every single day with them was not conducive for their relationship. And it resulted in her moving out. So the situations where you find yourself constantly as a victim and it's a pattern that keeps on repeating, you need to assess if you need to remove yourself from that situation or remove the people that are putting you in that scenario. Moving on to step four, which is to develop resilience. And of course, I have a definition for you guys. So resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity. In my last video, I used the same saying, but dust yourself off and try again. Growing up is a learning process and you're honestly gonna always be faced with adversity and you need to keep pushing. I know that when I face adversity, I face my challenges head on. And the way that you have to approach this is you need a strategy for how you're gonna go about difficult situations. Like how I said, if you're in a situation where you're constantly the victim, you need to remove yourself from that situation or remove the talk of people from your situation. And personally for me, part of my strategy now is talking to my therapist. I know that if I face adversity, personally, I'm gonna to wanna to address it myself and see what works best for me in terms of moving forward. But I also love to get an unbiased opinion and my therapist is great for that. <laughs> but also developing a strategy for how you're going to face adversity definitely makes you feel more comfortable with facing it. Sometimes facing adversity can actually be very overwhelming. And if you don't face it with a strategy, you can get wrapped up in the stress of it all. So if I have a problem, I know that I need to address what the problem is. If there's a timeline, know what that timeline is. If there's people involved, get in contact with them. Like there's so many things that you can do to break down your problems and that's really how you go about addressing adversity and knowing that you have people around you that can support you. And finally, that brings me to our fifth step, which is to cultivate gratitude. I've been saying this, but I have become so grateful for the life that I have and try to focus on the good rather than the bad. And the way that I do this is to just always remember what I'm grateful for. Like you woke up today, be grateful for that. Sometimes I get into the shower and I have a hot shower and I'm just grateful that I have hot water and a roof over my head. Like there are so many things that you can be grateful for. So if you always dwell on the negative, it can consume you. And how I cultivate this gratitude is to pick a practice. So for me, as I said before, I pray. I'm always gonna thank God for everything I'm grateful for, pray in my day, pray at the end of the night. And I realized that me doing that makes me grateful in the morning, in the day, and in the night. That's three times in a day that I'm setting aside time to be grateful. Other ways of doing this is journaling, affirmations, meditation, I would say try out any methods and see what's best for you. But the fact of purely just shifting your focus from the negative to the positive completely changes your outlook on life and gives you a better mindset. Remember girlies, we're not the victim here, so we're focusing on what we appreciate rather than what we lack. But that's the end of the video, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below any video days you guys have for me because I will do them. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.